All right, what's good, people? So we have the Arterior Mini Freak here, and I'm getting back into my uh, analog synth game. And basically, this is a um, it's a synth. It's a hardware synth. It has a uh, digital processing and a little bit of analog uh, circuitry as well. But the the overall output is uh, it is digital. So once you purchase this device, you get the the actual plug-in free with it. Okay, the plug-in alone is like. 99 bucks 100 bucks the uh unit itself is um can't remember i think it was like 600 or something which is a really good price for this it's not multi-timbral but i just uh i figured out a workflow for me to be able to use this with my standalone uh situation basically i uh find you know sound i want maybe just come up with something then i will record it into the mpc uh like a loop and then from there, I can process that loop and just throw it on a pad or and then just work it like that. And so the first thing I'm going to do um, now, I'm a preset guy. OK, so but lately I've been getting into sound designing and just coming up with my own little uh, different sounds just to just to be different from everybody. Else. That's what this one of the things that make Timon so popular and uh, other producers, they actually manipulated and created their own sound instead of just using you know what was available in the presets you know um, of course we know neptunes used the heck out of that core of triton and as far as i could tell they didn't tweak it too much but everybody knows those sounds uh come out of that keyboard and they did something special with those sounds as well but the first thing to know is that this synthesizer comes with 255 presets okay so you can save and create your own sounds as well and they can be transferred back and forth between the plug-in and the hardware and a good thing about the hardware and the plug-in is that they can actually link up together so you can you can have the plug-in open and then you can actually uh, control the plug-in with the keyboard everything lines up all the controls and everything lines up and um, I'll try to remember to do that at the end of the video just so you can see so what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna scan through some of the presets and then just see what if I feel anything I'm gonna uh, just lay that part down and I'll uh, go from there and let me see if I can zoom in on the actual sound here all right so yeah I'm working on my little camera setup so this is the Crusty Pluck. Okay, and it's up under the keys category. So let me just see what we sound like here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next sound. That's a nice uh, plus one there. I like that one. Let's go to the next one. Nice little bass there. I can go down, change the octave, and just see what we sound like. Another uh, workflow option is to uh, do use auto sample inside of the MPC. So I think it works really good with like bass sounds, look single notes and everything. Um, just testing it with the with the poly, you know, with the polyphonic sounds. Um, it was okay. I, I probably just need to figure out and work more with the auto sampler and do more editing at the end just to smooth the sounds out and to make them sound, you know, a certain way. But for the most part. I like to record directly from the the actual synth without using the key group. So let's go to the next sound here.
All right, so this is a pretty cool bass right there. It is called uh, Impala. Okay, very interesting, very interesting Impala. So. Uh, this sound right here is called Celeste. It, it is a uh, arpeggiated sound. Actually, the sequence is turned on. This keyboard actually has, you see right here, you can see the, uh, these buttons right here control the arpeggiator, okay? And you can actually change it and switch it up and everything. But let me see. I thought I heard something messing with this sound earlier. Let me see. I thought I heard something earlier with this. Okay, I, I like that. I'm feeling inspired by that. I'm not doing anything to the sound right now. I'm just gonna use as uh, the preset as it is. I like that sound. So what I'm gonna do, first thing I'm gonna figure out what the tempo is. And it does have a uh, tempo knob. Let me zoom out so you can see the tempo knob. Okay. So right here is the tempo knob. Let me just see what the tempo is. Okay, it's at 157. I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. All right, so I think I like it in that range. So let's go ahead and record that. I'm gonna set my tempo on my uh, on the MPC to to match the tempo of the actual uh, arpeggiated sequence, and then I'm going to use uh, time stretching or warp mode. I'm just gonna um, warp the sample just in case I want to change the tempo later. And I got a really, really, really quick clip on. Matter of fact, I'm gonna make that a whole video on how to use a uh, time stretch. So let's go ahead and uh, record that part. I'm going to just go over here to my MPC and change the tempo. All right. So I did notice a difference uh, when I play the the sound from my from my keyboard from the from the Akai MPC Key 61. I do not get the, arpeggi the arpeggiated effect. So when I play it from the actual Mini Freak, that's what I get. When I play it from the Kai, that's very interesting. Okay, so let's just go ahead. I have the um, the Mini Freak is actually set up as a controller for the for the MPC as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and play everything from the. Uh, from the actual mini freak. All right, so yeah, I got that in, but I, I meant to play the octave lower. Just gonna go on the uh, on the MPC and just go to transpose and just knock it down twelve semitones. All right, so I got that, and then what I'm gonna do now is just uh, show you how I would uh, sample that loop there and then i will uh assign it to a pad i can chop it up do whatever i want to to it uh once i get it inside of if i open up the software i can put flex beat on it or any other plug-in or even whatever's in the computer right now or what's in the uh, npc itself so uh what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and just show you my sampling technique on how to just keep this loop here then later on, I got a track where I did everything. I'm gonna freestyle a little bit with the uh, Mini Freak. All right, so I got that um, loop recorded MIDI-wise. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the MPC to show you that screen. Okay, so right here, you can see what I'm seeing on the MPC. So here's the actual MIDI track. And as you can see, I got the uh, the Mini Freak 
connected as the uh, actual sound module that's used for this track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record that. I'm gonna sample it basically. So we'll go to the menu. The sampler, okay. All right, and as you can see, right here I have the uh, the actual input turned on. You can turn if I if it's off by default, it's off. Can't hear anything. But if I turn it on, I can see it. Okay. So what I want to do, I'm, I have my threshold turned down right here because I want this sound to actually just as soon as the signal comes in i wanted to capture that okay if my if the if that knob is turned up high it probably won't catch it right away so i got it down right when the signal hits so but sometimes if you don't have it if you gotta have if you have the threshold too high it will um do a little popping noise at the beginning i found that out a while ago but i got my threshold turned down pretty low because i want to capture that signal as soon as it reaches it so i'm gonna uh let me see set my sampling time to i don't know maybe 15 let's just say 20 seconds to be safe all right so i got it armed and it's waiting on the signal and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hit play on the um actual keyboard here All right, it's sampling. Okay, so I'll let it go up a little bit. I can always trim that edge. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I can actually play this back. All right, so I kept that. And then what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a program so that way I got, um, I'm going to keep all the, the loops from this session, from this actual, I'm, I'm basically going to create a program for everything that I sampled just for this particular track. So for now, let's just mute that MIDI cha channel. Mute. Okay. And then really, I'm going to go ahead and just clear it because I, I got the audio. I don't really need it anymore. Um, what I've been doing lately, I've just been recording all the, the MIDI parts on one track because it is, it's not multi-timbral. So it, it's not like it can go, you know, I can pull up another sound. And then when I hit play, it'll play from a different MIDI channel now. I do have the uh, Jupiter XM that's coming up next. And it is a five part multi-timbral, four parts, plus a, a fifth track, which is the rhythm track. I'll be uh, using that, I could assign um, up to four sounds or actually five with the fifth one being the rhythm track I can assign those but in this case right here is on it's not multi timbral so um, it is a multi voice synthesizer where you can add different sounds and um, parameters to build a sound but it's not multi timbral meaning like like the old keyboards like the Triton and the the old Roland Phantoms had 16 tracks of uh, track of multi timbral capabilities but here since we only got one I'm going to uh, just keep using after I sample the loop that I make, I will uh, just clear that MIDI track out. All right, so it's really easy to just ha have the, the sequence highlighted. And then from there, you just go to uh, clear. Then it asked me if I wanted to clear and I said, yes. Okay. So now, I'm just gonna go to track two. I'm gonna go to program, okay? And then I can go to assign samples or I can go to uh, edit program. And that's the only sample I got loaded up. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that up to my uh, first pad in the, uh, in the program. If you, you saw my sample here was over here in this sample bay okay or or what's called the uh the sample pool so what i did i just double clicked it while this pad here was highlighted 
or you can see it here and when i double clicked it it actually loaded itself up to it okay so when i play that pad <laughs> There it is, it's assigned to that actual pad there. So I'm gonna go back to my main screen here and let's just go ahead and just name this program. I'm gonna do that by highlighting the program and then clicking on the pencil, which is your edit. Okay, so I'm saving it on my hard drive, my internal SSD card. I created a folder and let's go ahead and name this. So let me just go ahead and record that. Okay, all right, so now. Okay, so since now I got the sampling here, by default, I didn't really have to change the tempo because it actually detected the tempo. The mini brute says 152, the MPC says 151.84, but we can, you know, just go ahead and make it exact if you want to. And then when I play it. So, so now I got my loop, all right? And as you see, I time stressed it. When I change the tempo, it, it um, changes with it. And with that, you wanna have it set to Pro. Uh, Pro is close to Ableton Live. Uh, not quite, but they're basically almost there. Okay, so I went to Menu and then Preferences. Then I went to General. And if you scroll down, you can see the Time Warp uh, settings. Basically, just, just keep it on Pro. I'll stop right there on that part because there's a few other options, but let's just start off. Let's leave it right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to main and I have that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my MIDI track here and I'm going to uh, just go through some more sounds from the keyboard. All right, let's explore some more sounds. Once you turn the dial, you have to press the dial to enter.
Let's roll with that. I like this sound. I like these. And I didn't even do nothing to the sound. It's just a preset. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and record that MIDI, and then I'm going to sample it. That's it right there. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to sample that. Solo it. Go to menu, sampler. All right, let's record that. Arm it, ready to record. Same process, uh, let me switch screens over to the MPC. All right, so now we're ready to sample that part. Gonna choose the program to save it to. Then I chose my pad. I'm gonna save it to this pad here. Okay, so here I got my first loop there. All right, so we'll go here. All right. And let's go ahead and keep it. We'll go to a new track, put it on uh, programs. All right, so let's go ahead and record that part. So I got it on another track. I'm gonna go ahead and call this synth bass one. Okay, if I want to, I go ahead and time stress that, that sample too using the warp mode. Let me go ahead and do that because I might want to speed it up or slow it down. Change my tempo. So you detected the tempo was 150.60, but we know it's 152. So let's go ahead and change this to 152. As you see, we warped the, the samples and now everything is lined up. So now let me just uh, kind of just blend these a little bit. So I'm gonna go to, since this is a program, you can go to menu and then pad mixer and you can adjust the pads. Let's go back to the 
the MIDI track and clear it and then let's see if we hear some more sounds. Okay, so some may ask, uh, why don't you just use the plugin or whatever uh, if it's the same sound. Okay, use the plugin is cool if I'm in controller mode. That's fine, but you know, I just like the way the, it's just something different when the, when wires touch, you know, touch the interface and, and the sound actually goes through the actual analog circuitry. And right now I'm going, actually I'm going out of the mini brute, out of the mini freak into the MPC key 61. And then after that, I'm coming out of the MPC key 61 going into the uh, MPC X. I'm only doing it like that because I can just switch back and forth between both MPCs. But uh, I could go directly out of the keyboard into the interface, but that's just how I got my setup because I'm actually using both of these machines. I just kind of switch back and forth depending on what I'm doing. And I'm uh, still getting the muscle memory down for the MPC key 61. So I've been using it on probably, I'm gonna say 90% of the tracks that I've been making lately. Uh, so right now the MPC X is just a, uh, basically just a mixer. And so, you know, with the MPC key, I mean, with the MPC XL be sitting right there in that spot? I don't know, we'll see. Uh, with my problem with gear, uh, it probably will be sitting there. I've already got my guy on, uh, got me set up. So when it when it's released, they're just gonna hold it. And then uh, he's gonna contact me to authorize the payment. And yeah, I'll probably have it, I don't know. We will see. And something else I got sitting over here that I'll show y'all here in a second. I'm going to be doing a little bit more work with this because this thing right here is um, is amazing. Just to see Alchemist do what he do and other producers who use the, the older NPCs, like these NPCs are very relevant. Um, I mean, it's, it's just amazing how they sound and, and, and the functionality of them as well. So I like the older joints as well. I'm, so you which one I'm talking about and then we'll go ahead and get back to going through some more sounds yeah so we got the uh, infamous MPC 2500 LE the special edition this is actually number 164 out of 500 so it just means they only made 500 of these has a 100 gig hard drive in it has plenty of uh, it's maxed out on the RAM up to 192 megabytes has a um, like all the features oh and it also has the the jjos installed on it so shout out to uh lorenzo up there in va he sent it to me to you know kind of check it out um yeah he's really really big into the vintage npcs and he has a 2000 xl a 2000 that i blew out and we had did a deal on it and everything and uh he's looking to get into more vintage npc so he sent me this one and uh, looking for, you know, probably getting into the 2000 XL, which to me is like one of the best operating systems for NPC. So, yo, yeah, shout out to uh, Zo Beats up there in the VA. All right. I'll be doing some stuff with this keyboard as well, with this NPC coming up shortly. Let's just pull some more sounds. And as you can see, I've only gotten to, really, when I, when I first got this keyboard, first thing I did was go through the preset, so but I really honestly didn't get past preset preset 51 because I just come, kept coming up with tracks and everything. I'm going to play those couple of tracks here in a little bit to let you uh, see what I did with those. But right now, I'm just showing you the process. And probably most will say, yeah, it's a little bit more work. Why not just use the plug in? Well, I just like the the what happens after you sample the loop. So let's see. Off rip, I like that. Oh, another thing in the MPC, once I sampled the loop, it showed that my key, it showed what my key was. And I have to look at it. Once we open it back up, I'll show it to you again. But right now, I'm actually playing in G minor. So let's see what we got here.
I like that. So I'm going to play this. Wow, you hear that noise? Like, I haven't tweaked anything. These are just presets. I'm going to play that pattern. So I got that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sample that. Go ahead and solo the MIDI track. Menu, sample. Or sampler rather. And let's go ahead and sample it. Again, my threshold is turned down so I can catch it at the beginning. That way I won't have any kind of lag time or anything going on with the loop. Let's go ahead and choose the program. Zoom this in a little bit. Then I'm gonna choose this pad here. Right there. All right, so now we have it. Then I need to go ahead and save this program again because I did add two more sounds to it. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and record that part. All right, and you see it, the NPC guessed the tempo at 151.87. So we're gonna just we just we're gonna go ahead and make it uh 152. All right, so now when we go back here. I need one more sound, maybe just for the glue, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, let's go back to our uh, MIDI track on the MPC. I already cleared it. So you have an arpeggiator button here in a sequence, but you can turn those off and you can just play just the regular sound or click off.
can sample that, make a whole kit out of that. But let's go to the next one. I'm just on sound 27 right now. Nice one. Oh, crush bass. the tempo here to 152 I notice that this sound actually has uh, a little rhythm to it all right so let's record that next let's sample that all right I'm gonna show that process again solo that track menu sampler arm the track keep it I chose that pad here the fourth pad a4 as you can see here a4 and then let's go keep all right then yeah so we can uh, clear this on use and then let's go ahead and turn this track into a program Let's go ahead and record that. Alright, so let's 
so we got that and let me go ahead and time stretch it while I'm here all right and you see it says C-sharp minor which is a related key to G minor I mean to G major sorry to uh, G minor actually it's a uh, D sharp minor so So, I got a couple other tracks. I'm gonna show you that that process as well. But let's go ahead and add some drums. All right. So what I'm doing is gonna choose some uh, drums from the uh, what the drums that come with the NPC. Um, yeah, let's do that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the search engine function and just type in trap, or I can type in hip hop and then it'll pull up all those kits that are that are related. I usually just load up what catches my ear. And again, these are just uh, sounds that come with the MPC. Alright, so let's roll with this kit right here to start off with. I just want to cut some of that reverb off um, on that. I like that clap, but I just want to be able to add my own reverb to it. Mm. I can actually cut it all the way off if I want to.
So I turned the whole keyboard up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna balance those sounds out again. I'll go ahead and record that part first, so just to clap. I call it a flap. It doesn't matter. It's just something. All right. So you go back to the channel, to the one of the tracks that has the the first kit on it, and then you go to menu and then pad mixer, and then you can turn the samples down from there. They are a little louder. <laughs> Yeah, let's go ahead and add an 808. I'm gonna go to my 808 programs and I took one of Bolo, one of Bolo the producer's 808s from his X Factor kit and I turned it into a key group program and uh, let's load that up. This one I got a little parmental, little uh, bend on it there. in there now and that's kind of basically the track um i'll just arrange it from here and i'll do a quick uh, arrangement in song mode on the mpc all right so this first sequence i changed the name to it to uh pull up just imagine pulling up in one of them uh you know one of them whips one of them rides you know i like german cars i like uh foreign cars pulling up in a nice benzo uh nice little lamborghini or something i don't know you're just pulling up call it the pull up the car that you ride to the pull up pull up in in the meeting you know i don't uh, drive this car to the grocery store at all so 
you have a pull up yeah so we'll call this the hook and i'm gonna go ahead and do a little quick song arrangement Okay, and then we'll take that, then we'll go ahead and copy. Basically, you just copy out the sequences, edit them, and then you just uh, put them in order. Highlight the sequence, hit the pencil tool for the edit. Copy sequence. I see where to go to number two. Go back to my main here. All right, and then I'll pull up. mute here okay and then they go my tracks for that one so i'm going to uh take some things out this will be the beginning of my first verse here okay so as a matter of fact let me double the sequences first i like the track I had to go back to the first sequence, which is the hook. So once I got my second sequence here, I go ahead and go to the pencil tool. Let me just name it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the edit, to the mute. And now I can just take stuff out and this will be my verse. So let's see what we wanna play. I had that and then bring the uh, 808 back in on the second part of this because it's going into the second half of the verse okay and then from here we can um so from here i'm gonna go ahead and record that So let's do some what I should have done a long time ago. Let's go ahead and save this, and then we're gonna uh, go into song mode and throw it in, put it in order. And then we're done with this one, and then I'll play some of the other uh, tracks I've done with using the same progress process, actually. And uh, yeah, go from there. So you go to menu and then song. All right. So it's real easy. Uh, if you hit the record button. It'll just allow you to choose the the uh, pads. They got the actual sequences on it. And that's how you put it in order really, really, really quick. I um, learned that recently, uh, thanks to Bolo, the producer. I have been just manually hitting insert, um, delete, and adding the adding or removing the, uh, the actual sequences. So let's do it that way. Press record. Okay. And let's just, let's just add them in. Intro. Okay. Hook. Oh, I the wrong button. I told you muscle memory. So we got the intro. Then we got the hook. And then we got the first part of the verse. Second part of the verse. Hook comes back in again. Then we're gonna do the uh, the verse two sequences. Add those.
All right, so now everything is in order. All right, so let's let's uh let's play from the top. So yeah, I can uh, convert this to a sequence and actually export the uh, files and drop it into whatever DAW I want to use to tweak it some. You know, I can just come straight out the MPC. Either way, I can track out each sound. But yeah, that's just a quick way on um, just how to make this mini brute multi timbre Doing you know doing a little bit of sampling. Um, just make sure you're getting a good level and it's starting off at the right point. And from there, you know, you got your nice little analog output coming from the keyboard going into the analog input of your interface. And uh, yeah, to me, it just comes out bigger. And I can do these same sounds and with the plug-in, and I might just to compare, but I just know that I just like the way it sounds going into the interface. Everything just hits. It just hits different. Uh, but yeah, and go ahead and check out this little part at the end I just I did a couple of uh couple of tracks or I started some some of them couple of them done one I'm not done but just so you get the idea on uh on what was done and just a little workflow all right let me know what you think go ahead and uh like share subscribe and hit that notification bell and I will be uh having more um videos 
content is oh in the jupiter xm it is up next coming really 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 soon here um i got a couple other music video uh, music business videos to, to upload and then we'll uh we'll get on the uh get back on the make more beat making videos all right Just keep this as an instrumental.